Hi, this is Mark, and today I'm going to try to explain to you the best way possible um, how do I make my uh, walk cycle on Blender. I know this is not the best way, obviously. This is just a way I found comfortable to do. So, yeah, let's, let's, let's just get started. Um, one thing you need to understand, first of all, is like, I use uh, 12 FPS. I don't use 24. I don't animate on a tooth because because this is the the way I try to replicate the stop motion style. So yeah, the numbers are not going to be the same to you if you animate a tooth. So you basically need to duplicate everything by two. So first of all, obviously you need to go to pose mode. Um, I'm gonna start with one of the legs. Uh, one thing you have to do, obviously, is move forward this, and then go two frames and move it here. So this is like the first step. Um, so I already know that this is like the extreme one, like the extreme pose of the leg. This is the original pose. So what I like to do, and this is thanks to CJ, who talked about this, is use the type of keyframes. So I already know that when every time I see a red uh, keyframe, is because the leg is not on the original position. So the other one, I normally use uh, green, the blue one. You can use whatever you want. Uh, and this is the same. This is going to be here, and this is going to look blue. So, what I like to do now is move this to the other side, to the front. So, obviously, if I use two frames to move like the first step, it's going to take four. So, one, two, three, four, and that's it. So this is the other extreme, like the other position of the leg. Then we have to repeat the same movement. So as you can see, this is at, the f at first it's kind of confusing always, like uh, to get the, the cycle right. Be careful because the leg is always moving and this is not what you want. What you want you want this so this is what you're looking for this is the first cycle so what you want to do now is basically copy and paste this so one two three four is the amount of frames it needs to go to the front so I'm gonna select all the keyframes like this one press shift D to duplicate and click here so we have like four frames between this one and this one and then press shift r and just repeat the cycle and now we need to do the same with this so one two three four this is blue by the way and this is like the same keyframe also if you press alt g it's already there so it's the same and then one, two, and we can even recycle this one. So it's the same, it doesn't change anything, but you can do that. And again, one, two, three, four. Select these keyframes. As you can see, it has like a really easy pattern to identify. So that's why I use the different type of keyframes. So then Shift D, again, Shift R, and that's it. You already have the the cycle. Obviously, this is not finished yet because you need to add like a bunch of details. Um, the first detail I like to always add because I think it's the easiest one to add is the hip bone. So, by the way, I don't use the hip bone to to go forward. I use the master bone. And I'm gonna explain that later, but just be, be aware of that. So what I like to do is to go to the 
side view and kind of guess where it should be like there I guess I don't know. and then go here and that's it again I use this to identify the cycle because it is like a super simple cycle and now I need to find where should I put this here and that's a shift error again as you can see it's pretty fast to get this cycle I don't know maybe I uh, actually don't yeah I think this looks better uh, yeah I think actually it looks better now we need to move the arms the arms is actually the part like I really don't like to do I personally don't like the way it looks, but I always use the blue one to go to when the arms pointing forward, and when the leg is here, all the way back, I move this. Oh, sorry, I, I move in. Oh, I do it. I do it wrong. This is. Sorry. Uh, okay, so I need to move you here and you. For now, you're going to be here. So, okay, I don't like this at all. It's not like I really uh, like the result again, but it's the best uh, way I found. like kind of comfortable to do and I don't need to go frame by frame which takes like a lot of time so I need you to be all the way back green and all the way here blue now I need to wait until the leg is back so I can duplicate this and you can see it kind of look good is nothing super special what this allows you is to get like a really fast uh, way to animate this even if you want you can even add this movement I personally don't use it except I use I make like a run cycle because um, I it took like a lot a lot of uh, notes from CJ uh, so you can basically make whatever you want if you want here to be like a normal walk I usually do this even if it's super happy you can do something like this it doesn't matter. What it does matter is the distance between every single step. Since we don't have any reference here, I normally use like these, um, as you can see, like the, the meters here to get a reference of how much I'm moving the character. And I kind of guess like the, the movement is 9 meters between every single step. So we, we need to add like one key from here, go to frames forward and add this movement. And as you can see, it kind of, it is the place. Like, feels kind of good the way it moves so the other thing you need to do is basically go step by step like here and move nine meters and we get the process for the entire animation So, as you can see, I'm already, I, I finished this. And one thing you need to 
change on the movement, and I think this is kind of crucial on the animation, is to change the master bone movement interpolation to linear. Why? Because I say so. But not really, it's because I really think it looks better in final result. So this is it. This is like the the way I do uh, the walk cycle. The other thing you really need to be careful about is the rotations, because obviously you don't use like the the pivot uh, the this bone, the pivot bone. I don't like to use it. Anyways, what I actually had to do is eyeball this and try to use some kind of reference. And one, two, three, four. Here, move it like 90 degrees and try to match the position here. And maybe this is better in the sear. I mean, this is this is the uh, the only like really big count I have with this. The, the only thing I actually don't like this method but sometimes I need to add like a second keyframe here to to get this uh, under right place obviously this is not the right place at all I don't like it obviously this is like a super rough animation that no one no one wants to rotate a character like this but yeah, this is kind of it. I, I think this is good enough to, to show you the way I do this. Um, I personally like this way to do it because it's pretty fast. But anyways, um, I'm going to end this here. Um, thank you for watching. Okay, uh, actually I'm going to show you just because why not the what if you make this like one frame uh, instead of two frames, three frames? So you need one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's go here. And I need to change you over there. Uh, you go here, you go two, and you go here. So as you can see, this is like super slow compared to the other one. So I, this is like more dramatic way to, to move the character. And now we're moving to the run cycle. So basically right now for the run cycle, you have to apply the same logic behind the wall cycle. But instead of having a few frames where one of the legs stays still, the legs are always moving. I'm literally using almost the same techniques as CJ uh, shown in his tutorial. The arms movements are almost the same. When the right leg is on the front, the right arm is pointing back and vice versa. And you add some movement with the body rocky control and that's it. I know the, this is like a super rough animation. Hopefully this works to show you how to do it. Obviously, if you put much effort and much time, you're gonna get a better result than this. But that's it. I personally like this method. I use it all the time in all my animations. And hopefully you find this kind of tutorial useful. Uh, thank you so much for watching and see ya.